Hey guys, today we're here with Hassan Shami, Lebanese American, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, to talk with us about Israel Palestine conflict. So, Hassan, how do you feel about the October 7th attacks? The attacks on October 7th can't really be understood if you don't understand the full history of the Palestinian Israeli conflict since day one. So, many people want to, the, the media wants to focus on October 7th, but there's a lot more that goes to, that, that's part of the story. So, you got to go all the way back to understand how this even started. You know, back in like the early 1900s until today. And how did we get here? Because October 7th, you're opening up the book in the middle, you know, in the 15th chapter. You're, you're neglecting everything else. Just because we live a normal life and the Israelis may be living a normal life, the Palestinians and Southern Gaza and the West Bank are not living a normal life. So October 7th to them is just another, it's just a continuation of this conflict since day one. What do you think is a good place to start to start to understand the conflict from day one? I think we got to understand what Zionism is, you know, you, there's, there's a confusion right now between Zionism and Judaism. You know, they're, they're conflating the two as if they're one and the same. They're not. Zionism is a political ideology. Judaism is a religion. Islam and Christianity, Judaism, they don't have problems with one another. Islam specifically does not have a problem with the Jewish faith. What we have a problem with politically and religiously is Zionism. Zionism is a movement that was that was founded in like the late 1890s by a gentleman named Theodore Herzl. And it was a political ideology, not a religious ideology. And part of this was the Zionist movement was to find a Jewish state for the Jewish people in Europe and Russia. And so from this came the idea of let's move the Jews out of Europe to the Holy Land in Jerusalem, which was Palestine. What people don't realize is they all, they all use the argument that, look, this is the, they're the chosen people. This is the chosen land. Well, if this is the case, if you research Zionism, Palestine wasn't the only place they were looking into. They were looking into Africa and South America as well. I believe one of them was Uganda. So there's three different places they were looking into, and then they settled on Palestine. So this Holy Land issue where Jews have to go back to the Holy Land, it's not part of the Jewish faith. You know, it, it can be, it's, I believe it was mentioned somewhere in the Bible, but the the Holy Land is, is holy for, in Islam, we believe in all three religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. So again, you got to go back to understand what is Zionism? How does it differentiate from Judaism? One's a political ideology, one's a religion. And then how did we get to where Jews came to Palestine? So at this time, the Palestinian region, you know, there's Syria, Palestine, Jordan, Lebanon. This was called, this was called Al-Sham, which is like Syria. And it was, it was conquered by the Ottoman Empire, which led, which, which led for about 500 years. And as the Ottoman Empire was collapsing in the early 1900s, the British, and the French had a, had a secret agreement called the Sykes-Picot Agreement. In 1916, they signed this agreement that the Brits were going to take over Jordan and Palestine, and the French were going to colonize Syria and Lebanon. And they drew up the state lines, and so they divided this entire region into these four countries. And part of that, there was a gentleman named, his name was Arthur Belfort, he was a Brit, and he penned a declaration called the Belfort Declaration. The Belfort Declaration basically told the Zionist movement, hey, we're going to give you your state in Palestine. And so what happened after that was hundreds of thousands of Jews, there was mass immigration from Europe into Palestine. They were coming on ships and Jews were coming onto the land and taking over a territory which belonged to the Palestinians and the Arabs. So this is where the issue started and it has never stopped. So it's not October 7th, it's not 1948, it's not 1967. The root issue is the idea that Western countries just dropped off hundreds of thousands of Jews and said, we're gonna make a, Jew we're gonna make a Jewish state on this land. And so that's what the Arabs have a problem. So I know, like, I definitely know that we can agree on the fact that the media is definitely, you know, always has an agenda with the stuff that they're pushing. So for people like us who, you know, maybe haven't really had as much ties and background information to the situation, the only information we can get is really from the media. So where, like, if we're trying to learn about this stuff, like, where should we go to learn about it? Yeah, man, I don't even blame you guys. Look, out of the 100 mainstream media channels, seven companies own them. And these seven companies are owned by, we know what Kanye West said, you know, in his interviews. Yeah, we're going to see. And when they own the media, they control the narrative. And when a group of people control the narrative, you don't know what's biased, what's not biased, what they want to tell us, what they don't want to tell us. I don't blame you guys and many other Americans who don't understand the conflict. I truly don't. There are people who are in the middle, who are confused, and are just trying to figure it out. And then you got people who are hardcore pro-Israeli and they have their Zionist views. However, I think social media now has exposed this entire situation. Like you're seeing millions of people across the world who are now like looking at the situation like, whoa, what? You know, I didn't know about this. If you check my DMs on Instagram, because I've been posting so many videos, I'm getting DMs from even Jews who said, yo, I was taught one, two, three growing up. And you know, it's it's because of social media and all these posts that are going up from like investigative journalists and random accounts like myself and you guys. 
that I'm starting to learn all this stuff. And I'm starting to question, you know, what I've been taught. So for you guys, I just say it's tough, but stick to social media. Try to find unbiased views. You know, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna recommend a Ben Shapiro to you guys. Ben Shapiro is an extremist on one end, and I'm also not going to sit there and recommend a, you know, a biased uh, Palestinian or an Arab because obviously you guys gotta get the, you know, you guys are trying to get the story from both ends. But stick to social media and. Although I don't really agree with Pierce Morgan's views, Pierce Morgan has brought on a lot of pro-Palestinians and brought on pro-Israelis. You know, if you just listen to each interview, you know, as a good person yourself, I think you'll be able to figure out, you know, you know what the issue is in this place. So you can hear both sides, just like just like from all the Pierce uh, Pierce Morgan's um, interviews. Pierce Morgan recently had uh, Norman Finkelstein, who who was a Jew, who, who is a Jew. He was a pro. He, he used to be a uh, Israeli, and he also had uh, Dr. Gabor Mate, who is a former, who's a Holocaust survivor and a former Zionist. You know, these are Jews who are speaking about the Palestinian issue. You know, so stick to social media and YouTube. I wouldn't recommend mainstream media. Okay, so how do you feel about a person like when Andrew Tate didn't condemn Hamas? Like, do you agree with people when some people don't condemn Hamas? Yeah, I 100% agree because the, because condemning Hamas is, is how they want to control the narrative. You can't condemn Hamas without controlling all the, without condemning, excuse me, all the other issues that Israel has done. You can't condemn Hamas without condemning the occupation of Palestinians. You can't condemn Hamas without uh, uh, without condemning you know the the security walls around around Gaza, the West Bank, the fact that they're treated as second and third class citizens at best, that there's settlement expansion. So literally, if you're if you're a New Yorker born and raised but you're Jewish, you go to Israel, you get citizenship, you can take over a Palestinian home. You, know, you can't condemn Hamas without understanding the entire situation. So the reason why people don't condemn Hamas is because it doesn't tell the full story and it tries to control that narrative. Like when people say, hey, how do you feel? Like you guys ask me, how do you feel about October 7th? I got to give you the rundown of the whole story. Like condemning Hamas is not where we start. You know, we got to go back to the root. So would it be fair though to say that like, like someone like me just looking from the outside in, like I could say, okay, what Israel doing is wrong. But I could also maybe say what Hamas did was wrong as well. Would that be a fair stance in your opinion? Look, from guy, from someone in, in, in your shoes, I understand it. And, and, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to dog that at all. You know, I get it. You, got, you guys are just looking at innocent people getting killed. But when you look deeper into it, you'll understand that there's, there's a great question out there. And Dr. Gabor Mate on Pierce Morgan the other day said it perfectly. They said, does Israel have the right to defend themselves? And he said, every country has the right to defend themselves. Who is Israel defending themselves from? Palestinians. Who are Palestinians? They're the occupied. They live under occupation. So does that say the Palestinians have the right to defend themselves? Absolutely. So who are the Palestinians defending themselves from? From the occupiers. So you got a group of people who are defending themselves from the occupiers, and you got the, the occupiers themselves defending themselves from the occupied. So then now the real question is, who has a greater right to defend themselves? It's the occupiers that live under occupation, that don't have rights, that are, that go to military court, not civil court, that, that don't have clean water, that don't have... In Gaza, there's so many restrictions even on the food that comes in. There's like a calorie deficit. They calculate the calories that come in. They can't fish more than six miles into the, into the sea. And, and, and it's known the first six miles is not many fish. There are so many, there's 150 plus checkpoints. That's crazy. There's a billion dollar security wall surrounding it. You know, Gaza is three walls and a sea. These people live in an open air prison. So when people say like, yo, you know, what's Hamas doing? My question to you is this. Right now, if you're looking at the images on social media, you see a bunch of kids dying. You see some kids who are surviving, their brothers and sisters died, their grandparents died, their parents died. What are these kids going to be when they grow up? They're going to be Hamas. Yeah. They're going to be freedom fighters. They're going to say, I'm going to avenge the, the, the death of my family. This is who Hamas is. So I'm not asking you to support Hamas or not to support Hamas, but you got to understand why does Hamas exist in the first place? They exist because they're resisting oppression. They're resisting occupation. There would be no Hamas if there was no occupation. So there'd be no Hezbollah if there, was no, if there wasn't an occupation in Lebanon. These armies only exist because they're they're armed resistance. They're freedom fighters. So you can compare that to the apartheid in, uh, in South Africa. Nelson Mandela was considered a terrorist for 28 years. And he went to prison for 28 years. He came out, he became the president. Now he's one of the most revered men in history. But he was considered a terrorist as well. But what was he doing? He was resisting. And he even said, when there's no other form, when nothing is working, the only form of resistance is armed resistance. So I hope that answers your question. So I have a question about the um, why didn't Palestine uh, come to an agreement on the land? Why didn't they come to agreement on what? On the land. Like why didn't they accept the 54, what is it, 46 split or whatever they tried to agree to give them? Why didn't that ever get accomplished? So there is, there are, there's enough evidence out there that shows that over the years, Palestinians actually did agree, which I don't, I honestly, I'll tell you, I don't agree with the two-state solution. 
I think it's nonsense. I think it's I think it's gonna cause more war and it's not fair. There is enough evidence that shows it was the Israelis who always backed away and didn't and didn't follow up with, 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 with their agreement. However, right now you guys are in your home. I come into your home and I stick you guys in the basement and I take over your ground, your middle floor. And after I bully you guys for a year, I tell you, hey, how about this? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the middle floor, you guys can have the basement. Are you guys gonna agree to me? No. I'm That's not. exactly what it is. Man. People were dropped up on this land, and then they said, "Okay, here's what we'll do. We're gonna take seventy. We're gonna take seventy percent of the land. Seventy five percent of the land. We're gonna give you twenty five. Why? Why would they agree? So, so the the uh, opposite argument is that 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 they were already there before the Palestinians, correct? Like when no, we were watching so, the hist history videos, it was saying that the Jews were there first, and then what well, was it saying they were combined? Or they said they were both there. They were both there, and then both it's spread in the region peacefully. Yeah. But I, I have a, a question. So, what what do you think will be the best solution then? Like in a perfect world, in your eyes. If anything, at this point, we're the furthest thing from a solution. Like this made things 10 times worse than what it ever was. I don't know what the real solution is. You want me to be honest with you? It's a one state solution. One state solution, because Islam believes in coexistence. We believe in certain in, in living with it, anyone, whether we believe you're either you're either our equal, your brother, you're either our brother in faith or our equal in humanity. It doesn't matter what religion you are, it doesn't matter what skin color you are, we're all equals in humanity. Islam believes in coexistence. But I believe in a one-state solution. And what does that one-state solution mean? It means dismantling the current regime that's, that exists. The Israeli regime is a Jewish supremacist regime. It is, it, is, it is a military dictatorship. It treats Palestinians unfairly. It's an apartheid state. They treat the Palestinians, I mean, because they're a different race, they treat them unfairly. Are you, are you asked Christian? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's illegal for you to preach the word of Jesus in Israel. You can go to jail for that. But the, the Jerusalem and Bethlehem are the holy land for that's where Jesus was born. It's illegal. It's only Judea. Well, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So when you ask me, you know, when you ask me what's the solution, I think it's too good to be true, but it's a one state solution. You dismantle the current government and all the refugees in Palestine return back to their homes. So like 70% of people who live in Gaza are actually kicked out of their homes which is now called Israel, and settlers live in those homes, and the people in Gaza live in Gaza. So the idea is one state solution, dismantle the current regime, and the people get to return back to their land. So is that possible? I don't think so, but that's the only solution. But you don't think there would still be I, violence if they do that anyway? Like if everybody was free and it's a one state solution, you don't think there's to have like radicals that still attack one another? I, that's why I said it's almost too good to be true, but I think a two state solution is going to be the worst. Two states are going to have two neighboring countries and they're going to have divided t t territories of Palestinians. So you got some in West Bank and some in Gaza. And then you got in between, you got the Israelis. I think that's still going to cause war as well. Mm. But, so mm. here, this is why I always go back to the root issue. The root issue is this, is how can anyone justify bringing mass migration through an agreement of Europeans onto someone else's land, a foreign land, and dumping them there? And then they use the excuse like Solomon, you were saying, yeah, but they were saying like they're already on this land. No, pre-1948, 4% of Palestinians were Jews. 6% were Christian, 90% were Muslim. Oh. Now, if you want to go back and use this ancestral land argument where the Jews were here first, well, then you guys got to pack your bags and go home because the Native Americans were here first too. You can't pick and choose when you want to use this argument. At the end of the, at the end of the day, you got to realize throughout hundreds and thousands of years, you know, people have come and gone. Empires have, have taken over. They've conquered land. They've lost. People have converted religion. This is part of history. But you can't compare historic times to modern times. We live in modern times. Everything's documented. Country, there's the United Nations. Countries are countries are in communication with each other. So for all I know is when people came to America, they came on a boat not knowing who was on the land. They came here. They took you know they, they took the land, and then there was whatever you want to call it, the Native Americans. There's a war. They annihilated, they annihilated the Native Americans. And they took over. But that wasn't the case. In, 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 excuse me. In, in Palestine, the idea was there were these countries that said, "Hey, we're going to colonize Palestine. We're going to bring the Jews there. We're gonna, and we're going to put them there." That's the root issue. So if this idea of the Holy Land was truly part of their faith, why don't we see a pattern throughout history that shows Jews always migrating to Palestine? We don't see it. Why were they in Europe, in Africa, in, in, uh, in other Arab countries? They were in Russia. So wh why is it that 3,500 years later, after, after their religion came out, that all of a sudden, oh no, we have to go back to our Holy Land? It's a, it's, a, it's a secular movement. It's a, it's a movement rooted in nationalism. But nationalism is not the same as religion. So like sometimes, we, like for instance, you say, oh, I'm a Christian. All right, there's Christians in Russia. There's Christians in Lebanon. There's Christians in Palestine. Christians aren't rooted to one state, are they? You got, you got Christianity, and then you got nationalism. I'm Lebanese. I'm, I'm a Lebanese-American, so I'm American. My roots are from Lebanon. I'm Muslim. 
I don't say I'm from Mecca and Medina because that's where people go to pilgrimage for Hajj. See, I'm from I'm from I'm Lebanon. I'm Lebanese. So there's there's religious identity and national nationalistic identity. The Jews are more like if you're Jewish or Israeli. Like right now, if you convert to Judaism, you can go to Israel and get and, and you're, you get a natural born citizen uh, citizenship. That's, that's crazy. Country. Yeah, that is. That doesn't that doesn't work anywhere else in the world. That is actually that is insane yeah. to really think about that. Just yeah. to join a religion, I could get a piece of land. Yeah, it's so confusing. So I'm just like I'm just such a solution like solution based person. I just want to know like what like what do we do like if if this is all the case and this is all true like what like i don't know what like if you said there was nothing we could do then like I, then there's nothing we could do like i don't know i don't know you know look it's, it's not that there's nothing we could do in order to solve a problem you got to find what is the root problem so let's go back to the root how did this problem start the problem didn't start because the palestinians didn't accept the two-state solution why are they even being offered why is somebody being offered a two-state solution on their own land ask, ask yourself that question why why did the brits colonize and then they left they left uh palestine and they gave the weapons to the the israeli paramilitary that became the idf later on and do you guys know about the nakba yeah, yeah uh, that's that? the uh where seven hundred thousand were expelled from their homes in 1949. yeah so between like 19 say, say 1923 and 1948 hundreds of thousands of jews came from europe to palestine and this at, at this point the british military was there there was riots there was people revolting. There was there was there was killings back and forth. People were being t- taken out of their homes, and it was there was civil unrest for like twenty years. At this point, the Brits are like, you know what? We're giving up on this. We're going to give this to the United Nations, which was just recently formed, and we're just we're going to step away. So they stepped away. They gave it to the United Nations. At this point, the Zionists that are in Israel said, "This is the state of Israel." The United Nations signed off on it. They picked up the weapons that the Brits left behind, and they massacred. 500 cities and villages of Palestinians. 15,000 people died. 750,000 people got displaced. And they became refugees in their own country. So, like, you can look up interviews from Holocaust survivors and said, like, we were brought to this land, telling us that nobody was on this land. And we go to this house, and this house is filled with, like, furniture, and and the kitchen was, the, the fridge was still full, uh, full of food. And they're telling us, this is your home now. How's that? How is that fair? So, like, you can play, you play victim for the Holocaust. And we all agree that the Holocaust was, was horrible. It was one of the worst things in history. But why is it that now you can do that to the Palestinians? That's what I have a question about. So people are calling this a genocide, basically. Why are they calling this a genocide? The term genocide means the intent to kill off a certain race. Right? Yeah. Yes. So when you understand that from day one, the Zionists came and displaced Palestinians and killed them and jailed them and made them refugees. This is how the ethnic cleansing process started. And then you see what they're doing in Gaza. They're literally bombing schools, churches, mosques, hospitals, homes. They killed over 20,000 people, over 8,000 children. They killed 70 journalists. What do you call this? What do they say? They're, oh, Hamas is hiding behind civilians. That's not true. That's the biggest load of shit. There's no proof. They, they went to Al a hospital saying Hamas has a command center. There was nothing. There's no proof. And even if, if we're at a mall, and there's a terrorist at a mall. So there's one terrorist and there's 500 of us in the mall. Does that give them the right to blow up the mall and kill 500 people to kill one terrorist? No. no. That's what they're doing. And, and they're using this as an excuse. And you know what else they're doing? They're making Gaza inhabitable. So the reason why they're causing all this destruction is because after you bomb schools and hospitals and, and UN centers, after the war, how are these people going to live? They're going to force them out. So if they're not going to kill them off, they're trying to ethnically cleanse the area by pushing them into other countries. So I know you guys heard this argument many times, like, why don't neighboring Arab countries take these Palestinians? Well, that's exactly what Israel wants. Because the law in Israel is, as soon as a Palestinian leaves, they have no right to return. No right of return. Damn. So if these guys go to Egypt or they go to Jordan, they can never come back to Palestine. And so that's, that's like, there's millions of refugees between Lebanon, Jordan, and Egypt. None of these people can ever go back to Palestine. They lost their rights. So that's why you see videos of like the people in Gaza saying, we're never going to leave, we're going to die in our land. Because that's exactly what Israel is doing. They're trying to pressure the neighboring countries and the Gazans to put to push them out and, and send them over to Egypt. That's appalling. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty crazy. So, but wouldn't we call a genocide if, call it a genocide if, Israel was going into the West Bank and slaughtering everybody in the West Bank. Because when I think about genocide, I think about what the Germans did to the Jews in the Holocaust. So if you see any Jew, you kill them. They're not seeing any Palestinian and killing them. You know, they're just, I feel like 
And what they're doing is wrong, but if I mean if we can maybe we can call it a genocide to the to the um Gaza. You the Gaza, Gaza you know? Huh? Modern day genocide. Look, everything's documented, there's cameras everywhere. If these guys went to the West Bank and just started torturing people, the whole world would go against them. They yeah, can't do it. That would be the end of Israel. Yeah, I thought about that. That would, cause, that would cause World War III. So what they do is they try to maintain the status quo, right? So right now they got these guys under occupation. They got them under control. They, the Palestinians in the West Bank do not live a good life, man. They don't live a good life. They don't live free. I mean, they can't walk across the street to a grocery store because if that's an Israeli store, they have to walk seven miles around the other way. To, to go to where they where they can go shop. Oh wow! It's, it's all it's all refugee camps. So and they go through checkpoints day in and day out. So the thing is, they maintain the status quo, and every year they make it harder and harder. And every year they, they have settlement expansion. So more settlers come in. They kick Palestinians out of their homes. They move Jews in. So it's part of ethnic cleansing. Yeah. And then they have this term in Gaza called mow the lawn. So I recommend you guys listen to Candace Owens and Norman Finkelstein. This guy explained the Gaza situation perfectly. He goes. You can't understand Hamas and the war in Gaza without understanding what Gaza is. So they have this term in the idea called mow the lawn. Every several years, they go into Gaza and they just destroy it. What that does, it sets them back and it kills thousands of kids. So 50% of people in Gaza are children, man. So literally 50% of the population are children. And what they do every two, four, five years, boom, war, they destroy it with bombs. They make it impossible to rebuild. They make it inhabitable. And that's how they control the status quo. And that's how Israel grows strong. So to answer your question, you can't compare genocide of 100 years ago or 80 years ago to today. There's yeah. The rule of international. That is true. That is true. Laws are different. More countries are, are united. It, it, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah. That is very true. That is very true. Back to the, the Hamas thing. So if Hamas, like you said, freedom fighters, wouldn't they do something maybe to like attack like a military base or something that would maybe like help their cause? I just feel like what they did, like I don't see how what they, what they did help their cause at all. What what they do? The, well, they, from the information I've been seeing, like, because you said to go to social media and what I've seen on social media as well is that they were killing innocents as well. So... That's the only that's the only place I can get information, like you said, is social media. So like, I was getting it from both sides as well. So that's why it's like I just don't see how that now, what Hamas did on October seven. I don't see how that could help their cause. I've seen Hamas on the internet literally run into innocent homes and literally kill kids on video. I have too. Y'all yeah. saw a video of Hamas doing that? Yes, they went into the home. I think you saw a journalist walking in showing blood in a home. I don't think you saw Hamas walking in. I seen a the video. Times, uh, yeah, no, I seen a video, video of, them, of them walking in, and it was a family on the ground with a little girl on the ground, and then you hear a gunshot, and you hear all the family crying. I didn't see the um, physical body. The, uh, the only videos that we've seen that were in the civilian areas, were, when they were going into civilian areas, civilians were shooting at them, and they were shooting back because they're armed. However, we don't know all the evidence. I'm not going to say what they did and they didn't do. Here's what we do know. As Israel first came out and they said they beheaded 40 babies. We all know that's a lie. Not a single baby was beheaded. They claimed that there was rape. We know that's a lie. Zero evidence of rape. Even, Israel, even the IDF came out and said there's zero evidence. But how do we know that for a fact, though? IDF said it. He just how, said they how, confirmed how? it. But he said the yeah. IDF lied. He said they so, confirmed that that didn't happen. But if they lie, yeah. how can I listen to their lie? Like, if both are lying, if everybody's lying, how could I listen to yeah. anybody? Well, the lie was no, meant, no, was meant to sway public opinion towards supporting Israel is what he's saying. And he's saying they came out and debunked all the lies. Okay. So look, look, what what guys are gonna break out of Gaza and go rape women? Like, what? Like, how does that even make sense? Who's going? Which which freedom fighter is worried about raping a lady? That's why. That's why I was asking. That's why I was just genuinely okay. asking because that's what that's what you said. You know, go to social media, but that's what social media did tell me. But look. Ever since they said they killed 1,400 people, Israel came out and said, no, you know what, now the number is 1,200. And then they came out and said, they brought up the names of people who were killed. And more than half of them were Israeli soldiers. They weren't even civilians. There's interviews from uh, civilians that were at the festival that said that many people died from the crossfire, that they weren't killing them. They were dying from the crossfire. One lady named Yasmin, she's an Israeli, she said literally the IDF came and was just blowing everybody up. And that's how people were dying. And then they got the uh, helicopter, the, uh, the video from the helicopter that was just launching missiles on everybody at the festival. Israel has a history of um, attacking its own civilians if Hamas is there. They kill everything in the way. What I'm trying to say is there's, there is zero evidence that Hamas went in, massacred just a bunch of civilians, and left. The entire purpose, from my understanding, 
is they want to capture hostages, bring them into Gaza. People say, why do they want hostages? Well, because there's, I think, like seven or 10,000 prisoners in Israeli jails that are Palestinian. Children, women, and right now, half of the ones who, who got released in the West Bank were never even charged with anything. They were just sitting in a detention center. Those are hostages as well. So what they do is they take prisoners of war to let their hostages out, and then they exchange them. Since day one, the Hamas told, Hamas told um, the IDF and told Netanyahu, you want to end this? Release our prisoners, I'll give you back your 250 uh, hostages. But Israel didn't listen. They just kept bombing and bombing and bombing. So That's basically... The and, they, and they did, if you actually watch videos, I'll send you guys a, a video that I watched. They did attack military bases. So all those like bases they went to, they were shooting people. Those were those were military bases. So the concert, you're saying Hamas did not attack the concert? They went to the concert, but there's no evidence that they were just, they were killing people at the concert. No, I, I, I've seen actually I've seen a video of a person driving away from the concert and a Hamas person shooting fire into their car. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I've, I've seen, seen a lot, a lot of, videos of like tweets that. and a lot of and what, social I, media saying that the concert that, thing definitely happened. But Elon Musk also didn't he just go to Israel and he just looking at the baby crib? Did y'all see that photo of the blood, blood inside of a baby's crib? Mm. Did you see that? I saw, I saw that. Did you see yeah, that? You, you, Solomon, you know what else I saw? I saw burnt houses. I saw burnt cars. I saw blown up things. No, dude, what type dude. of machine guns blow up houses and cars? Hamas didn't go. They went with machine. They went with AK 47s. But why would they harm their own, own people, though? Why would they harm their own people? What is it? Why, did, why would they harm their own people? Because I've seen a lot of people say the IDF are killing Israel, yeah, Israel, Israel it, people, Israel. Jews too. I've seen that. I've seen Listen, that. If you, if you study the IDF, they have a history of doing this, man. Look, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a Palestinian that's anti Palestinian pro Israel? I don't know. I've really been really in this no, much yeah. at all. Yeah, me neither. But no, so, I have seen you seen Jews? Have you seen Jews that are anti-Zionism and anti-Israel? Yeah. If you look in New York right now, the, all those protesters, they're Jews. But could the Jews, could the media be swaying them one way as well? Like I feel like media can sway both ways. So you know, you could be right in that the, there is media swaying you know one way. But is it possible that social media and other medias could be? Swing, you know, their their, you know, agenda moment, also. their agenda also. Is that like is that possible? So, here, so so here's what I tell you, yeah, that's possible. So go look up Jewish Voice for Peace. Look them up. It's an organization. Go on go on their Instagram, look them up. They're all Jews. They're anti-Israel. They're 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 pro-Palestinians right now. You'll never see you'll never see Palestinians doing that. Why? Like even even the idea of Zionism, that the Holy Land, if you, if you go if you speak to Hasidic Jews and Orthodox Jews, they're anti-Zionism. They say, no, no, no nothing in our religion says. That, that we have to go back to our holy land. But on the Palestinian side, you don't have this, you don't have this, 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 this rift between the Palestinians. So look, it's definitely confusing, especially for you guys. But you can say I'm biased, you can say I'm biased, but I'm a, I'm a Lebanese. My parents left Lebanon in the 70s because of war. And at this time, Israel was occupying Lebanon. Why was Israel inside of Lebanon? Israel occupied my, my parents' village. My parents would walk outside and they'd see Israeli soldiers at, having a checkpoint pointing a gun to their head. Why? Why is that okay? Why is Israel inside of Lebanon? Until today, they still occupy parts, like right now in the north part of Israel, where they're at war, where they're going back and forth to Hezbollah on the southern border of, of Lebanon. That territory, for instance, my mother-in-law, that territory is her, um, that's her village. She can never go back there because Israel occupies it. These are the questions we gotta ask. Why is Israel occupying all these territories where the Arabs live? Why were they in Lebanon for, for 22 years? So, so can we not compare Israel to America? Um, what they did, like, okay, you're a proud, are you a proud American? I don't know if you are, you're not, but if you are, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm 100 proud American. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. They did the same thing to the natives as the same thing yeah, as Israel they, did to these different countries. How can you be a proud American and not support support what Israel is doing? Because look, when Columbus and these guys, from my understanding, when they came to, and I'm not justifying it, yeah, it, it was wrong. But the, but you're talking about a modern day conflict. In a historic conflict. You're talking about hundreds of years ago and something in the modern day, right? So there was no such thing as the United Nations. There wasn't uh, there wasn't world governments who work who worked together. These world governments conspired against the Palestinians to give the Jews the land. What happened with with uh, with America with, when they when the when the Brits left Brit, uh, Britain and they came to America is not the same as what's what's going on with with Israel and Palestine. You can't compare the two. There was, an, a, there was a secret agreement between the Sykes Picot Agreement in 1916. There was a Balfour Declaration, and there was mass immigration from Europe to Palestine in the modern day. That didn't happen in America. Didn't America have like a lot of migration, though, like to it? 
Because I'm like, yeah, my, my family true. came from, from Ghana to America. And I know, like, at the time, uh, Ghana was also under British rule. And so, like, I think, I forgot what the year is, but it wasn't too long ago because my grandpa was alive for it when uh, Ghana, like, gained its independence from Great Britain. But obviously, I'm not comparing situations at all because, you know, I, they, the people there weren't, like, as, as you know, like, oppressed, like, like you know, the Palestinians were. But the fact that they, they also came, like, to America at the same time, like, would that count as them like invading America because they wanted to come to America? You oh, know, hell no, no that, that that's legal immigration, just like my parents. You know, you got you guys talk to Vivek Ramaswamy all the time, right? Yeah. Yes. What is Vivek? What is what does he worry about? The northern border and the southern border. Why? It's illegal immigration. People are coming into our country. Right. You know, so coming in here. So if uh, at the time you said wasn't Great Britain in control of Israel when they had all the palace or all the Jewish people come? So wouldn't it be technically, since they were controlled, it would be legal immigration at the time, right? No, because no, because it was a secret agreement. So what happened was, all right, let, let's take let's take a step back. The way your family came to America, the way my family came to America, was through legal immigration. Right, right. It was a legal process. Right. We were approved to come here. Right. We didn't come with war. Right. We didn't steal homes. We didn't kill people. We didn't say we're coming like as a Muslim. We're coming out to make this a Muslim land. No, I respect the law of the land. Yeah. So if Jews migrated to Palestine because this is the holy land in a normal process where they, they moved there, they bought property, they became citizens, they grew businesses, and they became the dominant majority, that's, nothing's wrong with that. But that's not what happened. What happened was, like I said, the Ottoman Empire was collapsing. And as it was collapsing, there was a secret agreement between the Brits and the French, which doesn't make it legal, to colonize this territory. And then they handed it over to the Jews. Nothing about that is legal. But what, so Nothing about that is legal. At the time, before the, the Brits owned it or controlled it, so they were controlling, the Palestinians were controlling the area. So before the Brits, there was the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, so the Ottoman Empire was controlled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and look, we don't agree with the Ottoman Empire. They, they controlled massive territory for 500 years. But this was still a region that had Arabs living there. So like, there was no such thing as Lebanon. There was a region called Greater Lebanon, which ended up being Lebanon because the French drew it out. There was a, there was a region called Palestine. But all of this was part of a, a, a territory called Sham, which is Syria, Damascus. This was all part of Sham. And then they converted it into Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine. The Arabs didn't do that. The, the Brits and the French did. So like my grandma speaks, she spoke French and Arabic. Why? Because the French colonized her country the same way the Brits colonized yours. Right. I, yeah, I, I was just confused because I just feel like if it's under British control, even though it's like not justifying what they did, like say like it's wrong what they did, agree with you on that. But technically, if they control it, don't they decide what they do with it and who can come and go there? Because it's okay. they like if like. If you want to use that logic, if you want to use that logic, I'll say okay, no problem. They control it, but does that also give the people of the land who never agreed to this policy, who never agreed to this colonization, does that does that give them the right to fight back? Uh, it depends on what you would consider fighting back. Because what I seen on October seventh in the concert, I can't say that that's fighting back in my opinion. Okay, so so what about what about in nineteen forty eight in, in nineteen twenty five when you get kicked out of your home and a, and a Jew comes and lives there? No, I'm, I said that was wrong. I was just saying for the Ill illegal immigration point that I wouldn't consider illegal immigration. It was wrong morally, but legal or illegal, if they control it, they decide what's legal or illegal because they control it. No, I disagree with that. I but it could be morally wrong. Like, I agree, it's morally wrong. Like, there's, that, there's no debating that. Like, what they did to those people is morally wrong. But was it legally wrong because they controlled it and they owned it? I don't know. So, so let me ask you a question. What's, what do you go by? A legal compass or a moral compass? I go by a moral, moral compass. I live my life off a moral compass, right? right. I live my life off a moral compass. You know, I, follow, I follow religion. I follow absolute morality. What's good for everybody. Part of my religion is not only do I do good for myself, I also follow the law of the land. And I'm good to my neighbors. I, 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 I believe in coexistence. But just, just if there was a law that told you you can steal, are you going to go steal? No. Okay. Well, hey, it's not illegal. Like right now, right now, if you go to California, they have they have an issue. There's so many robberies, and like, hey, you can't stop them. They're not going to go to jail. They can come into Walgreens and rob all of Walgreens. If you were in California, are you going to do that? No. But I just can't compare that with like people who were also oppressed trying to get a better life for them and their families. Like I'm trying to put myself in both, you know, perspectives. It's like they weren't just stealing is like you just, I just took it from him. I knew it was his. Like, but like if my family is oppressed and like their families were also, you know, oppressed in Europe and dying too. That's the only reason I felt like they had to like, they were also in their eyes, if it's legal and in their eyes, this is best for my family and this is legal. That's what they did from their perspective. But from the other perspective, it was wrong because 
we they were kicked out of their homes as well. That's why it is a very hard thing. I'm just trying to see from both sides. Look, let me ask you this. Is your freedom and your happiness, should it come at the cost of somebody else's life? No, but it does because the U.S. soldiers, they go to the war every day and die for my freedom. So, so they don't, no, they don't die for your freedom. They, they say that just to, just to bring what, just to indoctrinate that. So I'm a proud American. I love America. I was born and raised here. I, my, my family's been here for over 50 years, but I don't agree with American foreign policy. I think we're bullies. I think we're world police. I think we destroyed nations. I think we killed so many people. 1.5 million people in Iraq died alone over, over a lie of weapons of mass destruction. Am I less American for saying I disagree with that? No, no, no. not at all. Not at all. Not at all, right? So when you ask me, are you a proud American? Yes, I'm proud, but does it mean that I agree with everything America's ever done? No, I, I, I won't say that either. I can, I, I don't know. I can but, get behind that statement. Back to your question about like, like, all right, so let's say there was anti-Semitism in Europe and the Jews wanted freedom and they want, you know, they, they were oppressed everywhere. Does that give them the right to oppress Palestinians so they can live a free life? No. So if, if, but hold on, one, time, one, one question though, but this does not, Go to the Six Day War, like so. What happened during the Six Day War? I keep hearing a lot of things. I heard that the United States heard, helped them, and I heard, heard they hear that the United States didn't help them. They fought that by themselves. Do you know what truly happened? Yeah, Six Day War was a was a war where the Arab nations around Israel in 1967 were going to go to war with Israel. And from my understanding, they brought. Do you know? How, do you know how Israel got? You know how America got involved in the Six Day War? Did they get involved? That's what I'm asking. Did they? Do you, do you, do you know how? Yes, they did. Do you know how? No, I don't. Uh, know. Didn't they send like uh, guns and stuff? Go, go look at look. Watch a documentary on Netflix about the USS Liberty in 1967, where Israel bombed the ship, the USS Liberty ship of America, literally bombed it <laughs> to pull them in, and they blamed it on Egypt. What? USS Liberty. Go look up the USS Liberty attack by the, by, the, by the Israelis on the Americans. It's on Netflix. Everybody knows about this. It's in history. It's not spoken about because you can't speak about it. But go look it up. There was a false flag operation blamed on the Egyptians to bring, to bring America into the war. I mean, morally, that's wrong. But, I mean, in some people's eyes, they think, you know, that was a tactic for to help them win and occupy that land. That's some people's argument. So it's, it's kind of difficult. And, and if we want to play by that logic, then I can say that Hamas can fight back. No, I, I I mean yeah, I agree. I can I agree that Hamas has a right to fight back, but it's Israel just hard does to, as well. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 hard. It's hard. It's hard. I feel like Look, look, if you want to go by the logic by man, you know, there's wars in this world and this is how it's always been and people have taken over territory. Okay, no problem. May the best man win. It's yeah, that's how some people are looking at it. Is that is that isn't that fair logic? Like like at, morally it's wrong. It is morally but, wrong for sure. Yes. Again, again my, my thing and I and I say this over and over, my thing is it's not complicated. Let's break this down back to the root issue. It was it was pre-planned, and they dropped off mass immigration into Palestine, and they took over Palestinian territories, and eventually they kicked Palestinians out of their homes, and they made them refugees, and now these Palestinians still are refugees, and they live in the West Bank and Gaza, and some live in Jordan, Lebanon, and Egypt as refugees, and they're not treated as first-class citizens. They don't have normal rights. They don't have access to clean water. They, they don't have, especially in Gaza, there's calorie restrictions. They don't have the freedoms we had. Um, there's a lady named Abby Martin. She's an investigative journalist. White girl from America. She went to, she went to Israel. She had two long format uh, podcasts with Joe Rogan. I advise you to listen to what she has to say about Israel. She's a, she has no reason to be pro-Palestinian. She went and seen it for herself. And she interviewed Israelis on the streets. And in, in her interview, she'll tell you what these Israelis said, normal citizens. And you tell me if it's moral, if these people, if they're, if they're ethical in any way. No, that, that, that's, a, you ask me for an unbiased view, go look at Abby, go, go research Abby Martin. No, you, you, have Abby no reason, Martin? you have no reason to be biased. Abby Martin. You, you have no reason to be biased about the whole situation. I, I have no reason to be biased. I just have, look, I have, I'm deeply rooted in this issue because love and I went through the same thing. Our country went through war with, with Israel for so long. Until today, there's always threats back and forth. You know, I, I, our land was occupied. My, my family home in 2006, when there was an invasion into our village, was used as the actual hospital for the IDF. They, they took over our home and they used it as their, as their medical center. They were checking the IDF soldiers in and out. They were bullied. 
What's not like treason? Not treason. What's that one law that we have in our constitution that fight against that? Uh, uh, yeah, it's like, third, is that the third? It, no, it's like one of the, it's like twelve it, or something. It is. It's, it's, it's the third like one. The, the, the soldiers, soldiers can't come into your your home, mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, Man, I, I thought that was like twelve. It's the third. I think it's the third. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, but day we just heard. I mean, that's insane that happened over there. See, look. We got some good freedoms over here, man. So, we why, take so if it's that locked down, why do people say that the United States is their ally because yeah, they're the democracy? Man. If if a lot of people say that they're they're their ally because they're the only democracy over there. No, that's not. Look, look. Yeah, people do say that. Is, people do say that. It's not that they're they're they're, they're the ally because they're a democracy. It has nothing to do with democracy. This idea of fighting for your freedom and we're going to fight for democracy. There's a lot of countries out there that America supports that are dictators. They supported, back in the day, they supported Saddam Hussein. They put Saddam Hussein in power and they killed him. They put Gaddafi in power and they killed him. But they're not allied they countries with them. They support whoever, whoever they can benefit. Israel is the anchor for America and the Middle East. And the Middle East is one of the richest lands on this world, in this world. Between Africa and the Middle East, all the oils in the Middle East. It's all political. It's all political. It's all from oil and it's political. That's all it is. It's not, no, even the Lebanese government. It's not ethical. We can't sit there and trust our governments and say, oh, they're good people. And they're looking. No, man. What makes them rich and what takes care of their families is most important. That's all it is. They're the people in power. That's why I sort of like the big Ramaswamy with some of, some of the stuff he says when he wants to come in here and just get rid of half the CIA and the FBI. And I want to focus on America first. Even though I don't agree with his, um, uh, with his stance on, uh, on Israel, he's still one of the only presidents that wants to prevent World War III. He goes, no, I want to, I'll support him diplomatically because we're allies, but there's, there's a limit. You know, we, we got to be honest with each other. I respect that. I may not agree with him, but I respect that. Because he's not going all in. Some of these guys like Ron DeSantis and all these other Republicans like Nikki Haley, they're war mongers. But why? Yeah, I don't think anyone fight. wants World War Three. Yeah. Anyone sane. No, no, nobody wants, uh, no sane person wants World War Three. Unless you're making money. Yeah, yeah. Then you wouldn't be sane to me if you want World War Three. Right. But yeah, man. Any more questions? Um, nah, I'm good, this is man. a great talk. conversation. I, I yeah. definitely want to look into Abby Martin. And who is it? Uh, you said Candace and Norman Finkelstein. I've been seeing we're getting a lot of yeah, comments about the, watching uh, Norman. There's a, there's a book called The Hundred Year War in Palestine. For any of, of the viewers watching this, Hundred Year War in Palestine is a great book. There was a couple interviews by Pierce Morgan that were phenomenal. There was one with Norman Finkelstein and one with um, Gabor Mate. They're both Jews. Candace Owens also interviewed um, Norman Finkelstein. So I, I would recommend you guys listen to that. And then um, there's Abby Martin. She has two podcasts with Joe Rogan, and she has a bunch of work on Twitter. That's amazing. And there's another investigative journalist who's Jewish. His name is Dan Cohen. You can follow his work, too, on, on Twitter. Like These guys are actually on the ground. Like We can sit here and talk. These guys went to Israel, went to Palestine. They went to Gaza. They've seen it. They know. So a lot of these people who go on the ground come back and be like, man, this isn't what we think. Like This is a lot worse than, than, than the media portrays. You know, but I appreciate you guys, you know, putting me on this. I appreciate you guys asking questions, trying to figure it out. I know it comes with the best of intentions. I know there's a lot of confusion and I can understand why you're confused about Hamas. Look, I get it. You know, I don't, I don't expect you guys to be pro Hamas. I'm not even sitting here saying I'm pro Hamas or anti this or pro this. All I'm saying is there's a problem in the Middle East. There's a problem specifically right now in Palestine and, and, and Israel. And rather than fighting about all these small details, October 7, 1967, I, Let's go back to the root issue. And the root issue is there was Western nations that justified a mass immigration into, into Palestine. And this led to the Nakba and it led to the displacement of Palestinians. And now these Palestinians are refugees. So the question is, do these refugee, do these refugees have the right for their own God given right for human, for freedom? And do they have the right to, the, to resist their oppressor? Do you want to live as an oppressed person in an occupation? You want to live in Gaza? 2.2 million people in a, in a, in a little, uh, it's, it's 20, 25 miles by five miles, something along that. It's, it's the most densely populated area in the world, surrounded by a billion dollar security wall, 150 checkpoints, and, and a sea that you can't get into. You want to live there? No. no. You gotta, we got to put ourselves in their shoes and be like, wait, why should they be okay living like this? You know, so it's always going back to the root issue and putting ourselves in, in their shoes, but... Like, like I said, man, I appreciate you guys having me on. If you guys have any questions, you know where to find me. Yeah, yes, thank sir. You. We'll thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Hassan. Y'all, we actually have talking to some people that's part of the IDF. It's illegal for them to actually conversate with us. That is insane for them to even talk a bit about the war. Well, yeah, we're going to kill that democracy. That's why they're the damn, why they're together shit. We're going to kill that right now. Yeah, we can't, we go can't kill right that. Now. We can't, we can't kill go over that right now. Well, that's, that's, that's how it was that's, explained. Is that a fact, though? Oh! Uh, 
Like, because I do we know that's a fact? What's Because if it's a democracy, you can. They vote and all that stuff over there. So no, yeah, they have freedom of religion. Yeah, you do, but you can't. You can't they wear. Say, you can't wear like crosses in their holy buildings. And you can't like. He's right about that. I seen a video where a Catholic priest was visiting over there, and they said, "You know how they wear those cross, uh, the cross on the uh, on the necklace." It was like you have to cover that up. You talking about the, like, the rosaries? Like, yeah, he was like, well, "No, I yeah, it doesn't. It's not." He was yeah. like, like, "Why?" I'm talking like, about Bethlehem. It's one, it's one yeah. percent of the population. What is? Christians in Israel. Yeah. I seen a Palestine Israel too. He actually, we should be Palestinian Israel, yeah. Israeli, Israeli. Yes, but I ain't gonna lie. Palestinian Israeli. To me, you know, uh, see, it's just so many arguments, man. Because I feel like, like I, I have a lot. I feel like yeah, it, it is a lot of misinformation out there, but everyone has a bias. I feel like we have a bias, maybe. He definitely has a bias. I'm not gonna say he's non biased. I'm not gonna say I'm non biased. I'm uh, everyone has a bias, so it's kinda hard to I don't know, man. It's hard to unpack. It's yeah, heavy. It's very hard. And, and a lot of the things that happen in it are sad on both sides. Yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and say one side is not wrong yeah, and yeah. one side is yeah. wrong. No, fast. I think that it's it's essential to admit that both sides have definitely Hamas done wrong things. was wrong for yeah. what they did. I cannot I'm not, I'm but sorry. I, that's I just, what I'm saying. But I see the perspective of people I saying, I see why but they did what they did. What I, I see. see I see, and, and, I, and, I, and I can understand that. Like, obviously, there's a lot of civil unrest, but you know. Yeah, the why, like, not the why, but the how. Yes. Is what it, I, I, can, I can see what led up to them doing that, but does that justify what they did? Like, the how. You can't, you can't, you can't. Okay, this is how I see it. Like, people keep saying, like, yes, they have a right to fight back for what they believe in. Okay, you do. But. Then you can't cry about the response. No, that's, yeah. like, that's like that's like saying, "Oh, I don't want this bees nest here." You go swat the bees nest, and all the bees come sting you, and they won't stop. You swatted the bees nest. That's 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 how I see it. I mean, personally, yeah. That's like saying, "Oh," but they seeing it as like, "What were they supposed to do?" The refugees. Ooh, no, I understand. I understand. I understand. If you revolt, I feel like it should have been that. some type of military way. And just from what I've seen online, maybe I'm wrong. Have that, though. But but I'm just saying though, like, like, maybe maybe not. I just like the strategy. It seemed like to be that I cannot at all see how the concert helped your cause. It I cannot did. see how it did. I, I have I'm a sorry. question. Y'all believe like the situation gonna be the best man standing because obviously right. we're seeing that they can't live in harmony. They can't. Oh uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we have seen that. And you know, personally, a lot of the information that I've read, like when I first started reading stuff, like when this first first happened. I mean, we first did a video. I really went and started reading. I was like, okay, like I mentioned that, like the blockade, the billion dollar wall, it's cost Gaza's economy what, like twelve billion dollars. So they can't get no food or nothing in and out. Like uh, Hassan said, Israel controls how much food they have, how much water they have. They control, they control, they control everything. That I said that's, that's wrong. Saying, that's I still saying. believe that's wrong. That's terrible. That but like horrible. doing things like the October seventh attack, I understand. Like that's like a. Uh, uh, response to like the horrible treatment like they said like the settlers coming in and taking their land the government saying it and they kicked people out of their homes and they took their homes over i think all that shit is completely wrong it's Not terrible definitely. i don't agree with none of that i, th I literally I, there's literally no justifying that but it's not justifying. things like things like going suicide bombings and going and killing and i understand that's like a condition of of the circumstance but it doesn't justify it and it also like when you when you have events like that, it justifies Israel's response. Okay, but look, that to me, though, am I wrong for thinking that? No, 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 because no, 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 no. you know, it's, it's, it's saying if you're oppressed, then you respond to violence. Okay, so if you respond to violence, what do you respond to violence with then? That's violence. what I'm saying. No, really, like, like, fire, fire, like there's fire. no like, I understand, like, I understand there's no diplomatic way to approach this, but like, it's just like to me, like, I understand the treatment of the Palestinians is wrong. I've always said that since the first day we did it. I think it's wrong. I think that the constant bombardment and trying to flatten Gaza. See, but was wrong. Wrong. I said that. I said why a lot of people have problems but, with what we're saying on sometimes is because that we're not saying what the idea I've done has been wrong. Listen, wrong. brother, I understand, understand the idea. Like, we see, we see, we seen the video where all of them said the idea of killed my family. We seen that. I completely think that is probably something. But stubborn people don't. From what we've uh, seen on the video, we've seen. We also not a single video we've seen that has covered an idea. So. Literally, I can say what they've done is wrong, but I literally have no historical context or uh, evidence also, of what Also, does. whenever you, whenever you uh, spoke from the other side, we got a lot of, we got some backlash for that as well. So it seems as yeah. if whatever side you take, definitely. you're going to get backlash in definitely, that situation. Definitely, definitely. So there's nothing really right you could say, because whatever you say is going to offend someone. Yeah. yeah no. In this situation. I, 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 I completely understand people want us to put ourselves in their shoes, but like, 
as a man. I genuinely as, tried to. No, and like, I, 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 when we just talked to dude, I genuinely tried to like. I tried my best, y'all. No, so y'all listen. hate me, crucify me. All y'all want, man. I enjoy. I'm sorry, I enjoy listening to what I had to say. I've li- I've read. I've done background research on my own. I've read Vox articles. New York. Oh, I don't remember what the freaking first one I read. New York Post or something. Or some See, bro, Washington Post with all the information. I've read multiple different sources. I've got a lot of background information on what's going on, how it's financially affected people, what's led up to it. We've done historical videos and stuff. I understand that there's a lot of people giving biased approaches and That's things like that. Phone. That's not mine. So I mean, like it's it's all wrong. Like don't get me wrong, but like from the historical context, when has starting a violent act? Positively resulted in anybody, especially when we're in America. We're, 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 but they won the world. We have to figure out who land was it first. Because we figured out. Figure out you can't. You can't. Because yeah. all, yeah. yeah. all, yeah. all, yeah. all, yeah. all yeah. Buku yeah. empires owned their you land. Can't figure it out. So he said himself said you can't figure that out. You can't figure out who was. Buku empires owned their land. He said you can't figure out. There was some diplomatic, diplomatic. But the thing about Palestine. Right after the Ottoman Empire, Empire. Empire. Was for sure, but there was diplomatic. There was exactly. some diplomatic. First, 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 uh, first, first, first. You can never know, and let's because it goes back to which religious book you believe in. And, and, and people keep saying like they keep saying like that's the problem. If it's yeah, a who's first what, battle, like, that is what we, what the people have to figure out. That's what I'm, the, the, the who's first battle, battle. The who's first battle on either side, I don't think is a valid argument. I don't think so either. I don't know. That's like that's like because there were strictly Palestinian people there, and then the immigrants came in, and then they figured out. You know, hey, we want this land, and then they start fighting for the land, and they want, hey, hey, but, but this is not fighting for war. Because you come in, and then, you know, my people tell me, hey, these the people over there that is occupying us right now, that wasn't their land at first. That was what they did. But, but if you tell the other people, they said, well, according to the Bible, all, it was our land before that. So yeah. that's why I say it's this. I How do you even what? come back and think you can die? But, but remember, if the video we also watched, it said that the uh, Roman Empire was against them, so they uh, purposely oppressed them so that they would leave. What? Yeah, so right now, that's why I'm like, who do you? That's what they say. That's what he said. That's what she said. You know, it's a he said, she said. The problem is the killings, yes, but the problem is also in misinformation, guys. We will never on both out, sides. On both sides, like, yes. you can't just sit here and say one no, side give no, information. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't like the argument of one person say, okay, people go be like, oh well, they're, they're you know they're giving all misinformation. So do you think the other side is just definitely both sides? The like they're, they're both doing this. I think both sides are wrong. Both sides are lying. I really you can't also, sit here and say that one side's good, one side's well, good. I also think that, I also think that, like, uh, they keep saying, like, put yourself in their shoes and, like, I don't know, man, as an American born person, I just, like, there's no time when I see, like, people going and killing a bunch of innocent people to get their point across as justified. Like, right. we have people do that crazy shit here and I just, I've never once looked at it and said, well, uh, that was okay. Yeah, and, and, so, and, like, y'all asking American people who are born in democracy, who have seen that, the way it's we've, been, to be. we've been we've been seeing that like this condition and, and and seeing how things are operated, we have we will never, me personally, can never justify okay. terrorism. I'm okay. sorry, okay. I I got, I got I one thing too. Let me finish what I'm saying. I understand like they freedom fighters, they fight for their freedom, they're oppressed. And okay. People keep yeah. saying like da da da. Even Can when black people, people Jim Crow, yeah, black people, freedom fighters. No. Listen, bro, black people were oppressed, bro. We did not like they keep saying, "Oh, slavery." Yeah, slavery. We revolted and said, "They have citizenship, yeah, bro." Yeah, we bro, just said, "Okay, I'm not gonna bro. say they're freedom fighters." Okay, okay, okay bro. bro. All I can say, well, other than it's freedom fighters, like, like, they, they don't have full, they don't have 100 percent citizenship in Israel, and that is a problem too. Is that, that is they're definitely good. a problem. If they're getting governed by them, they can't eat. Or get water, that is a problem. That's so, 100%. I'm not, so I'm not saying, saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying it's not a problem. So, like, so, I, I you say, okay, talk, talk, so talk, talk, they're talk. not 100% citizens, so, like, they're not getting treated fairly. So, what that's like us as Americans being an no, American. I'm not, I'm we're not not saying, saying, we're and we're not like, Jim Crow. You did black people. Listen, listen, listen. Did black people during Jim Crow? Go blow up a bunch of buildings. No. Did they go we kill a bunch of white people? No. No, 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 no. Bro, there was a lot of civil disobedience. No, 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 no. They were peaceful. No, no. Then we sat in on buses, spray the holes, okay, bro, 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 bro. hit by dogs. Wrong, wrong. Wrong. I'm not going to say how you should fight back against a bully. I'm just keeping it up. People are just keeping it up. Nigga, school. Stop. Nigga, school. 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 That's what's okay. happening right now. That's okay. Okay, and that, that's the school is covered by that logic. That's fine, by that logic, that's both sides. Okay, and that's fine, bro. But we have to look at how many bullets? Because they, they, the like they killed seventeen hundred people in one day. Fourteen hundred. How many hundred? How many hundred? But only thing that listen, listen up, listen up. Listen up. Don't have that happens. People keep trying brother, to bro, brother. Brother. listen in the comments. If y'all read the comments, they keep trying to say, "Oh, I, I find it hard." Therefore, black Americans can't understand oppression. First of all, it's twenty twenty three. 
all of us will tell you, tell you, none of us have been oppressed. So that argument is dead. Second off, during Jim Crow, when black people were, or when was it when we weren't, we were two thirds of a citizen? Yeah, and, and uh, stuff, black people did not get a bunch of guns and, and weapons and go kill white people. That never happened. White people will come and kill us. We, and we still it. fought, and people, we had, we protested. We we found diplomatic ways. We we, we voiced up on problems, and we found we we found common ground. Yeah. Now we we're free. Situation. We're equal. It's way worse than ours. I completely understand that, but they keep trying to. They keep trying to. Well, they keep saying, "Well, if y'all, how, I'm gonna keep it hurting. We can't. We literally I'm cannot. Keep it hurting. Keep it hurting. Hurting. Keep it They're in the same position black people was yeah. like longer uh, back in the day. Okay, maybe like because like, they just don't have citizenship. Oh, maybe right when a white person could just walk in your house, put a gun to you, and kill you, and it'd be, they'd be good. Yeah. Or walk you out your house. Yeah. They're they're using using property. Property. That, that's definitely black people was white people's property. It's real. Black people's property. And so that you know, black history textbook that's happened a hundred times. Father down, but not Jim Crow era. That's what he just said. But uh, I, 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 don't I, don't take it, I haven't taken back that far. I, I'm just saying Jim Crow was a time where we weren't allowed to do the same thing. We weren't allowed to be in the business of white people. Like he said, uh, they can't go across the store. They have to go to a store they can go to. White's on the store. You can't go in the store. That's an example. I'd have plenty of black people watch black movies and say, damn, that couldn't have been me. I would have did this. I would have did this. Nigga, we all would have fought back against oppression. Yeah, so I'm not going to act like these. It's not okay for them not fight. Listen, fight brother, we're not saying it's the way. We're not saying it's not okay. It's the how. It's to me, it's the how. To me, it's the how. To me, it's the how. Kill a bunch of it's innocent people. The how. Listen, but you try to do something to help your cause, then it's okay. But if you're, if what you did, how did that come to help your cause? See him tell me. It did. Okay. So that's what they're freedom fighters. What happened? But how are they freedom fighters? They've been at war. No, no, no. But tell me. But tell me. How are they? How did that? You said freedom fighters. The definition of that, that is fighting for freedom. They don't have freedom. So the concert, doing that in the concert, help them get freedom? No. Okay, so how are they fighting for freedom by doing that? Uh, answer, answer the question. Answer the question. Answer the question. Hamas, we don't know technically what their goal is. I heard it. No, no, yes, we do. Yes, we do. No, we don't. They said their goal is to eradicate the Jews. Yeah, that Hamas, is what they yeah. said their goal is. They Hamas, said Hamas, that is their goal. I heard some Hamas soldiers say that they just want to kill IDF soldiers. No, but that's a fact, bro. That is a fact. They said it on multiple videos. Hamas goal, bro. It's to eradicate Hamas. That's what they said. 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 Group of people, then you are not a freedom fighter. Yes, Solomon. But I'm not saying period, Solomon, you are a terrorist. Just wait a second. I completely understand what you're saying. They're oppressed. They're trying to get their. They're trying to fight for what they believe in. That's okay. That part is okay. But your means of doing that, I cannot justify okay. them going okay. into a country and killing, harming innocent people. They went into a, 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 a village and slaughtered the people there. I, can, I can't justify that. Unfortunately, that is wrong. That but, is wrong. So uh, that's all the people. I think the people want to hear, and I want to hear. Is it wrong with the IDF that has been doing to all these other countries, apparently, where he said they Yes. Lebanon? Okay. Do you think that? Yes. Like what? What, what the uh, IDF has been doing to Lebanon and all these other countries? What did they do? Going into villages, taking their villages. How do you know that's a fact? He just said it. Because he just said it. Bro. So you don't think the IDF has been... So they just going into villages and every other country... But and you just also said that... They have peace agreements. Don't they have peace agreements with all the countries around them? Is that right or wrong? Do they have peace agreements with all the countries around them? You act like you have not been seen. No, you act like you don't know that. Do they have peace agreements or not with all the countries around them? All I can say... Is that true or not? Yes or no? All I can say, he said... Don't show me no damn Instagram videos. No, 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 no. This is the truth. Listen to this real quick. Yes, but if I go, you don't go back. So what's the problem? What are you telling me? I didn't do this. I didn't do this. Why did you tell me? You Look, nothing he does is gonna change what, what I what I feel. You're still in my house. If I don't steal it, someone else is gonna steal it. Fuck. So IDF soldiers are literally going into villages. That's not a soldier. Uh, okay, this is this is a random person. They feel like they can do this. Because but he don't feel like he can do this. That's so why I just said to him, I said maybe that's morally wrong. But that that was with the UK who was running it. You in the no at the time I'm talking about the UK who uh uh in the, the way back. Who gave the land like to the, the is This is what people are saying. It's that okay, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not showing what the IDF soldiers are, are doing. I, I think they're definitely not censored, showing it. Censored. I think they're definitely not okay, okay. showing it. I, I think that, uh, I, I will, I will agree, Solomon, what the IDF has done is wrong. Some of the stuff that they've done is wrong. Yes, yes. I'll agree with that too. Yes. Okay. Okay. But, so, but, I'm not, like, like, like we said, there's wrong on both sides. Yes. But it doesn't justify going and killing people. Not, not at all. What they've done, they they done is not justifiable I, either. I do not believe the Hamas is at all freedom fighters. I believe the Hamas is a terrorist organization, period. Okay. Hamas is wrong. IDF is wrong. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. All we want is peace among everybody. Yes, I said that. I've been said that. Okay, all right. That's all right. If you kill me and harm the innocent, Times that people they did wrong shit. Did I not say that? Yes, but I mean, it's just like like what like what, what is it? Like we're leaning toward 
Hamas is doing all that, but I'm not gonna. I can't. Wait, I, I, I cannot at all. I cannot justify what Hamas did at all. Yeah, bro. I can. I can just. I can say. I can just say. I have to condemn terrorists. They needed. They needed to do something, but what they did was not what the right thing was at all. They did a terrorist act, and I don't think terrorist acts are ever the answer. Suicide bombings and all that shit, bro. Like the concert. How do you justify the concert? How? Okay. Imagine if black people. Imagine if black people bombed. The United States. That's what you just said earlier. Imagine what if they went and blew up a bunch of Why we blew up a bunch of people in the United States? Like, right? bro, you see what you see the Black Lives Matter protest where they burn buildings. You see how they, the response to that was. And you were standing out on the day that they need to, you know, deserve so, a weapon right. if America Black Lives Matter? Yes! They are. So, but they, they didn't even kill nobody. Yeah. People died at that shit, but they wouldn't. They so, wouldn't, if Black Lives Matter killed 1,500 people, would they be wrong? Even more wrong? That's like one Palestinian dying and we see it in our video and they go riot. Thousands of them have died. Yes. So they have thousands of black people died. Thousands of black people died. That's the last thing I'm saying. They have more rage than we do. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So yes, they feel like. So you can say. So you're saying what they did was right. So the way they did it was right. That's my argument. That it was not right. That that's the thing we all said that was we see why it happened. We all see why it's happened. I cannot say that. I cannot say that. I can't say it. I can't say it. I can't justify. I can't justify what they did, though. It does not justify what they did, though. I will not say what they did. I said they were oppressed. Those people were oppressed. But how they did? What they did was not. They did not proving they did not help them. All it ended. All what Hamas did on October seventh did was make more Palestinians die because they started bombing and bombing and bombing. If they wouldn't yeah. have did that, maybe they still be oppressed and maybe shit would still be wrong. But I know how many thousand wouldn't have got bombed well, yeah, just now. Know, I mean, so that's what I'm like. I, I can't. Time, we were in slavery. You know, we were all oppressed. Took time for stuff to happen. You know, when bad, when probably slaves did some crazy shit that we don't know about. Still, they still weren't out of slavery. Yeah, so, no, it wasn't. You know, so it but takes it time. It's like, how did, it you know, I'm just saying, you know, you know, hey, look, man, when you fight the bully, the school cheers. That's why everybody's cheering right now. I understand. But by that logic, both sides, because they what? feel like Israel feels like um, the, 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 the concert, they got bullied That's the concert. They feel like. I'm not yeah, saying, I'm just saying, they feel like. And you forget, yeah, Israel, all the Israelites like, technically, and all the Hebrews feel like they're like bullied. Do you feel like that was a bully move? Well, they, I thought like that was a terrorist act. It was a terrorist act. But it, I mean, so, but yeah, that counts as bullying, I guess. Terrorism, bullying, yeah. <laughs> I guess, man, you know. I, I feel for both sides, bro. I really do. It's just, this is a, a touchy situation. It is. It's very heavy. And I feel for the... No one comes up I with feel, a solution, though. I, I feel for the no Hebrews, one has a solution. It's, it's, it's impossible to have a, a solution if both of the both of the societies and both of the races are having, you know, yeah, I, that's radical ways. Yeah. So if you can't live under one, what can you do in in that situation at this point? Them. So it's either there's gonna be one man on the top of the hill and the other man perish, or they live together, or they live together and integrate like the American people have done, literally. I yeah. don't see what like what, America is the prime let's, example let's, of let's, everything. Let's, let's like, just okay. This I'm next segment, let's, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll admit, but okay. Solutions move forward. Does anyone have any? No, nobody has a solution. Okay. They can't. There's people can't. Nobody can come up with a solution. That's all. That's Their the, leaders haven't came up with. That's a solution. what I'm saying. So if there's no solution for me to decide. Like, like, like I don't. It's, it's finna get the man on top of the hill, and that's what I'm saying. The only solution I have seen physically is the man on top of the hill. Yeah, I mean that's what you said. One, one, you said one state solution or two state. You said one state. One, one state solution. One man on top state. of the hill. Yeah, so I was an amazing guest, guys. If y'all know any guests that would y'all would like to come on, send us a DM on Instagram on the Cartier Family, guys. This was a great interview, and uh, yeah, guys, we're out here.